What's going on guys? It's Kyle again with DTOM Knives and Gear and today we have a very interesting knife to share with you today. This is the Artisan Cutlery Gavco Designed Great White. <laughs> Look at this thing. Stay tuned. All right, welcome back. Okay, so this thing, the Artisan Cutlery Great White. This is a Gavco design. Uh, a lot of the Gavco designs are named after sharks. I've had a Gavco design on the channel. I can't remember which. I think it was the tiger. Tiger shark. Um, and as you can see, they're very polarizing designs. I mean, this is one funky looking knife. And I didn't really know how I was going to like it. Because I don't remember being very crazy about the tiger. Uh, but it really surprised me for a few different reasons now it's just it's a polarizing design and so if you just don't like the design you don't like the design me i'm kind of on the fence i i think it's cool it's got some features that are cool but um it's not usually my kind of my cup of tea as i usually say and i say probably all the time and too much uh but uh it is very well made i have actually been really happy with artisan cutlery uh, I have, and I want to mention this, if I can find it. Where's that? Where's it at? Where's it at? What did I do with you? Did I? Oh, never mind. I was like, did I let somebody borrow it? I have the Artisan Cutlery uh, Centauri. This is a front flipper, and for a long time was my absolute favorite front, front flipper. Carbon fiber, titanium, S35VN. Uh, when I did the video on this guy, which guys, you talking about false shit. Whoo. Uh, when I did the video on this guy, I absolutely raved about it and I loved it. However, I kind of gave, uh, a little bit of criticism about the finish that they have on that lock bar. If I can get it to focus, maybe one day right there. That was the only criticism I had of the knife. Well, artisan cutlery reached out to me and said, Hey, we like this feedback. We are going to try to tr fix that problem. Now, I haven't uh, seen anything or heard from them since, but that really hit home with me that they're watching the videos on their knives and they're taking criticism, taking advice, and seeing if they can improve their product. That's cool. Now, I, I, I probably am going to try to see if anybody's bought one lately to see if that problem is fixed because I don't really know. Uh, but they reached out and said that, so that kind of hit home with me and then also made me like Artisan Cutlery even more and their sister company, CJ, CJRB, who almost did it. Uh, so anyways, I am a fan. The Gavco designs, I'm also a fan of Gavco. Uh, you know, their designs, are they look a lot like this. I mean, you when I pulled this up and you saw it, I was like, yeah, it's a Gavco. It's a Gavco, right? Uh, there's your Artisan Cutlery symbol. And then, of course, you have your Gavco bloop right there. Uh, <clears throat> this one, premium materials. This is part of the Artisan Cutlery more premium line of knives. And the reason I say that is you get this really cool tin that I love. Uh, so the packaging on this is stellar. And then a really nice uh, branded pouch with this knife. So... With their higher end knives, uh, and I say higher end, I mean it's still very reasonably priced at uh, 199. Uh, I think it's great. I love the when a company kind of goes above and beyond on their packaging because it matters. Um, I mean now, yeah, granted, when I buy a knife, this would go in my box of box of knives, uh, but I like it. I could actually use this tin for a lot of stuff, right? So I appreciate that. Get all this crap out of the way. Bah. Uh, Another thing that I really like about it is the detent that they have on it. You could shake this out. I mean, this is normal shake. I can shake it out, but I can almost shake any knife out. The detent on it, I think, is great because of the reverse flick. Holy moly, do I love using the reverse flick on this guy. It is very satisfying. And then watch this. Fall shut, smooth action, obviously running on bearings. You can't ask for more than that when you're talking about a knife, right? Well, at least for me, and most of us knife guys, we like to fidget with our knives. We care about detent. We care about uh, 
does it reply re reply uh, deploy reliably uh, the false shut smooth actions we really love um, I mean I can use the um, the thumb or the hole for a thumb deployment it's just I don't usually do that if I have a hole like this then I use the middle finger flick so much fun to play with this knife um, it's very well done the pocket clip works really well doesn't sit exactly deep carry um, so as you can see where the where it comes out at but it works really well kind of has that little swoop up usually with those little swoops it kind of you know is an ergonomic meh. but for this knife it doesn't poke me I don't have I don't hardly even feel that it's there so that's really nice I want to see there is your artisan cutlery branded there as well maybe can we see it yeah so Brandon is done, you know, it's it's almost hard, it's hard to see because it's not a, a different color. The backspacer is titanium. The scales are blasted titanium, S35 VN steel. So you're getting pretty premium uh, materials, and I think it's worth the $199. I think I've seen them on sale for uh, a little bit less, but yeah. Now, you'll notice if you are a subscriber to my channel, you know that thinner knives don't do well in my big old hands, right? So... Ergonomically, if I hold the knife back here, it's comfortable. Um, it's just too thin because my fingers just really doesn't really want to wrap around the knife because there's just not a lot of material there. Not a huge deal because it's still comfortable. However, this very generous finger choil and choking up on it, oh boy, does this feel good. <laughs> but not only the finger choil, but right here, what Lefty would call the Pone Spoon, is a perfect spot for my thumb, and this grip is absolutely melt in my hand. Did not think that was gonna happen. Not at all, because of the thinness. It's still a little thin, but it's very, very comfortable. I was surprised, and I like it a lot, uh, this grip. Now, if I hold it back here, I just don't like it as much, but you can do it. The finger troll, I mean, I could use this knife all day, I feel like, because the fit and finish on this product is very, very nicely done. It's rounded in, in all the spaces and the places that it needs to be. Um, the access to the lock bar, which does have a um, lock bar insert and an over travel stop, which is always a plus. Very easy to get your finger in there and get it out of the way. Uh, it's a little bit thin of a... Um, of a bar, you know, the, the right there where the titanium is. Usually, if it's thicker, it's more comfortable for me, but for this, I didn't find it to be a problem. Uh, it's a little wide uh, this way, but not as like, you know, here, there's a PM2. So, it ain't ridiculous. You know, the PM2 actually is a little bit taller because of the hole. Uh, I do like this style of hole deployment. The hole for the Spydercos works great. But I really love this shape. This is actually longer. The shape that you get on like a giant mouse. See, it's the kind of the same style shape of a hole. But it's a little bit elongated here. And I like that. It really does give me a perfect spot to do the reverse flick. And this is a, a really good reverse flick knife. Like, I had so much fun carrying this. Just opening and closing it. Because the action and the deployment works really, really well. Now, the blade shape, I have no idea what to call this. Uh, <laughs> it is a, you know, a pretty good recurve there with a flat, you know, kind of like going up as a tonto and then backs off here. I like that it kind of backs off. The reason I say that is because it actually adds thickness to the tip. Yep, come on, camera. Now, and you, come on. It actually adds thickness to the tip, so it's not as dainty as I thought it would be either. So the tip is actually pretty strong, in my opinion. The swedge on the top, it's a its a weird-looking blade shape, okay? It's weird-looking. I'm not a huge, a huge fan of um, recurves, um, you know, and this one is about as much as I would ever really want um, because of sharpening. I just don't have the tools. It's everybody, you know, yeah, you can get the, the rods and stuff. I get it. But I don't have them, and I usually stay away from recurves just for that reason. However, it does look really cool, right? I mean, uh, if if you like that kind of thing, some people are just like, ah, eh, it's ugly, but 
I, I dig it. I really do. This knife surprised the heck out of me. Now you've got this titanium backspacer that was really well done as far as you can't feel any transitions. You have, that's it. There's no barrel spacers or anything like that. This looks like it would be very easy to take apart and maintain. The pocket clip, like I said, works really good. I, I found it to be very pleasant to go in and out of the pocket. Even though it doesn't sit deep carry, you know, I like to be able to grab my knife and that's about how much I grab to pull it out. I just think it's easier uh, and, I, and I like it. The blade finish is a very like polished satin finish, so it's kind of a fingerprint magnet. But as you can see, the grinds, uh, you can just see fingerprints there, but the grind lines on the flats and then that beautiful swedge and the pone spoon, I think it's great. They also did a really good job of chamfering the inside of the hole. Uh, that's always a plus uh, to save your fingernail. It still kind of shaves off a little bit. You can kind of see it every now and again, but it's not sharp. And so it's very comfortable to deploy that way. Uh, and then, of course, with your thumb, like I said, I just really didn't think I was going to like it because it's so thin this way and the handle is so thin that way. But with that finger troll, guys, being able to choke up, you got plenty of or I've got plenty of room sticking out here to where I can really put it in multiple different uh, grips. Now, I haven't tried this thing. Reverse grip, eh. Reverse draw cut, eh. You know, I don't ever use them. <laughs> I don't ever use those uh, uh, grips, I guess. I only use really a saber grip, and this is this right here is how I cut with a knife. Um, I did my regular EDC task. It worked really good. I mean, you've got a nice point to pierce packages. Um, to It slices. Uh, you know what? I don't even think. No, I didn't. I got a couple here. So let's see how it does with cardboard on the, on the um, uh, recurve. Slice is pretty good. A little bit of resistance, but not much. The thickness behind the edge is about 23 to 25 thousandths, depending on where you measure it across these two different uh, angles here where the bevel is. I uh, didn't really get prepared, but let's see. We'll go ahead and do some paracord. I'm not going to do the twisted sisal rope because it's not mine, uh, and I just don't want to do that to this knife. But cuts really well like that. So it does perform like a knife should, right? Uh, with the grinds, it has a flat grind. And, uh, you know, 23, 25,000 is not the thinnest behind the edge, but it works, you know, it works just as, you know, I, I believe that the, my PM2 is a little slicier than this, but it's not by much, right? So all in all, I can definitely recommend this knife. What we're going to do is we're going to turn the camera around, of course, like we always do, get some specs and some size comparisons and get a closer look at this wicked looking blade. All right, let's take a closer look, shall we? So you have these nicely done blasted titanium scales uh and like i said rounded edges all over it doesn't leave anything sharp uh, see if we can actually get a look at where this lock bar is you see that that's the same wire burn uh because that's how they use or that's what they use to cut the lock bar that is the wire edm burn so just like on the artisan cutlery uh centauri Centauri, geez, I can't talk. Um, that could be done better. Uh, it is, you know, I think another step that they can do, they're blasting this. So I really wish they would go back and blast that area. Um, now, being in manufacturing, I get it. Sometimes when you blast thinner titanium like that, it wants to move on you. So that might be the reason that they leave it and they blast it before they burn. Uh, and I can totally understand that. I think there's stress relieving ways that you can prevent that. Um, but you know, to, it's fine. It's not like it really takes away from the knife. I just, uh, would rather see that finished a little bit better. Um, but as you can see, it's not a small knife, uh, very thin, like I said, but not small. How big is it? Well, it's about eight and a half inches long, right? So that's good. Anything about eight and a quarter inches and longer is really where my wheelhouse is. I like that size. It does have a 3.75 inch blade with a 3.375 cutting edge. The blade width is about an inch and a quarter at its tallest point, which is cool. Uh, flat grind, it is about a, a 4.75 inches on the handle length. The handle width is about 0.875 and it is about a hundred, or I'm sorry, about 440 thousandths thin this way. And I say thin that way because 
that's usually a problem for me. I'd rather it see, uh, I'd rather see it a little bit thicker for my hand size. A lot of people are going to like that. I uh, I would rather have it a little bit thicker. Um, it is about 152 thousandths on the blade thickness. And with that flat grind, like I said, I, I think it could have been ground a little bit thinner, but it's not bad. 23 to 25 thousandths is a very doable, and I and I don't I can't knock it for that. I think it's fine. So let's go ahead and put it up against some other knives, right? Here it is against the Spyderco PM2, just a hair longer than the PM2. So if you are familiar with that, you'll know kind of how this is going to, um, I guess, be in your hand as far as lengthwise. But as you can see, much, much thinner. And then while we have this up here, let's go ahead and see how much thinner it is. So as you can see right here, whoops, because I can get you in there. It's about the same thickness. The PM2 is just a little bit thicker. But back here, it is, well, maybe it is. Okay, I'm just kind of stupid. So it's just a little bit thicker, the PM2. This one, however, is contoured. So that does help, I will say that. The contouring of these uh, titanium scale handles does help with being so thin this way and that way. Uh, so I appreciate that. They could have just done flat, but they did not. Uh, and then of course I'm going to put it up against the uh, giant mouse since we headed out to compare the holes and then there you can see the difference in the size of the holes. <clears throat> I love spidey flicking both of these knives. This is one of my favorite knives for a reverse flick, spidey flick, whatever you want to say. But as you can see, it is still a much larger knife. You get a more clip point traditional style blade shape versus this hybrid of blade shapes that we don't know what to call it, right? <laughs> the other one that I want to show you is another titanium frame block. Yes, this is not a very good comparison as far as um, price range, but the as you can see, it's pretty similar in overall length to the Koenig Arius. You have the gener or the finger troll on the flipper delete here, and then the flip uh, the um, beep, 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 finger troll on this one. The finger troll on this is I call it generous because my fat finger can fit in there and it's not, I'm really not worried about it actually um, hitting the blade. On the Koenig Arius, it's the same way. It's just a little bit different of a shape because of the way they do the flipper, flipper delete. But these are pretty similar in overall size. Obviously, a much more expensive knife made by an American company. This one is produced overseas in China, um, but... The price that you pay versus the materials that you get and the fit and finish, the action, I think is really worth it, guys. Uh, if you like this design, if you like Gavco designs, then this is a no-brainer. I mean, this is one knife to definitely go buy, check out. Uh, um, <laughs> you know, you want something different? You can't get much different than this. <laughs> Everybody's carrying around a PM2 or a Benchmade Super Freak. Uh, you know, something like that. And you want to be a little bit different? When you pull this out of your pocket, people are going to go, whoa, what the heck is that? Now, there's going to be some some places that when you pull this out, it might be a little too polarizing for some whiny little people that don't understand anything about uh, knives and they think pointy things are dangerous in anybody's hand. So, yeah, I guess if you're at a party with a bunch of kids and stuff and the parents are bleeding heart liberals maybe, this might not be the, the knife to pull out, um, but I think it's awesome. I think if you were to carry this, people, you would get so many like conversation starters. Oh, dude, what kind of knife is that? I uh, I did whenever I carried it. Whenever I carried it to work, people were like, whoa, now that's different. Some people thought it was ugly, and other people thought it was the coolest thing they'd seen all week. So, you know, I carry a bunch of knives. I'm the knife guy at work, and so that's, that's kind of the norm, right? But I think it's great. I can definitely recommend it. It If you have bigger hands, tread carefully because it is right there on the cusp of being too thin. Uh, the contouring in the, on the titanium scales does help. And when you choke up with a finger troll, it really does melt in your hand. I, I uh, was so surprised. So guys, this one was, uh, I forgot to tell everybody, this one was actually provided by the Apex Passaround Group. Holy crap, I can't believe I forgot to say that. So I really appreciate the Apex Passaround Group, Blade Banter, David, for allowing me to join the group, and for Artisan Cutlery, 
from what I assume is the one who sent this in. It might have been sent in by one of our uh, members of the Apex Pass Around group, but I believe it was Artisan Cutlery who sent this in. I appreciate that. Whoever sent it in, either it be the customer or uh, a member, I really appreciate being a part of it. Guys, The we have so many different great channels that are a part of that group. I want you to go check them out, um, <coughs> which Blade Banter has just been an awesome guy. And he has his own knife, guys, that you're going to be able to purchase really soon called the Orion Knives Solaris. Definitely go check that out. I have a video on that right now, uh, and I've actually got another one that we we're going to be seeing soon on the channel. Guys, stay safe in this freaking crazy world that we are living in, and we will see you in the next one.